Breaking news, we have a huge announcement by Fetch AI, Singularity Net, and Ocean Protocol to merge and form the Super Intelligence Alliance. And I guess with that also merge their three tokens into one, the ASI coin. And this is basically a giga bet on the AI field, which in my personal view is also going to be one of the most important and also one of the most obvious narratives for this crypto bull run. Here's also the proposal about kind of their structural, their jurisdiction they're in, um, the team sizes and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, that's uh, a proposal here. I think it's very, very interesting. Um, this is probably the first time, I guess, that something like this is being proposed at this size, at this caliber. Within Cosmos, we actually also had a couple other proposals. Remember, for example, the Stripe proposal last year at Cosmoverse where um, there was this forum post about merging the SDRD token with the Cosmos Hub, but that didn't go through. Also, I think there's a huge difference between basically, you know, opening up for the community to um, get feedback and to basically have a, a say in the decision-making, whereas this is basically just an announcement, right? This is already like decided basically that um, this is going to happen, right? And if even if, if you're a Fed holder, right, this affects you. Also us as validators, we're a Fetch AI validator. Fetch is a full-on Cosmos LA1 blockchain, by the way. So if you hold Fetch tokens on an exchange, they will automatically be labeled as ASI tokens. So they will actually be fully converted into ASI at a one-to-one -one ratio. So yeah, this is very interesting. Also, if you're holding Ocean or AGIX, there is um, yeah, going to be big changes, right? These tokens will then be relabeled as ASI as well. So this is a full-on merger and this is huge, right? But like I said, this is a massive, massive bet on the AI field, which I think um, is also an interesting one, right? The only thing that kind of could cause any friction here is how are these three teams collaborating, right? Who is going to be the decision maker in that alliance? What's the decision-making process, right? Um, so yeah, that's a bold move. But um, yeah, very interesting to see. And we saw as an immediate result of that, um, when the announcement came out, Fetch started running a little bit. Um, we also saw Ocean, I think, had a bit of a pump. Uh, Ocean Protocol, they are yeah down, down today, uh, $1.47. But when the announcement came out, you saw here this immediately uh, green candle here from $1.22 to $1.00. 60 and now we're at 147 so still up from the announcement singularity actually did not really have a big pump but um yeah very very interesting nonetheless now we also have some big news from Celo, which is also a chain that i haven't been covering too much but um we're also running a validator with stakesito and it's also very very interesting outside of cosmos play Celo now has native usdt um Celo is also evolving into an ethereum l2 and um yeah they're kind of restructuring a lot of things but also they're landing big integrations right and native usdt is obviously huge um to have that on natively on Celo. so yeah check that out as well and give Celo a follow on twitter next up we also have a big announcement which is um our aleph zero node we we are now in the active set of aleph zero um we made also a uh, content partnership with them here on CryptoCito, and now we also joined the validator set with Stakesito. So expect more content around ZK and around privacy and also around some of the updates around uh, enterprise adoption, uh, pilot projects they're running, um, and yeah, just overall also the kind of interoperability and scalability on their substrate chain. Um, Aleph Zero is a full-on sovereign layer one blockchain built on substrate though, not on Cosmos SDK. Um, but it's a very interesting outside of Cosmos play as well, alongside uh, Celo that I just mentioned. I um, also talked about Near last week, also very interested in that one. Um, because I think this year is really about um, interchain, right? Interchain adoption. Interchain basically also means um, kind of interoperability at scale, right? Uh, and basically also branching out from a, a home, a native ecosystem and connecting to other ecosystems in a trust minimized way, right? So Alice Zero is really also focused a lot on that. Um, right now, there's no compatibility natively with the Cosmos ecosystem. I hope that they consider implementing Picasso Network's Centauri implementation because that would actually make it possible. But I think that will also require some tweaks in the, in the code base. Nonetheless, if we look at the rest of the market, we see today Bitcoin back above, slightly above 70,000, but we're about to enter halving month. So in a couple of days, actually on Monday, we are April 1st, and that is 
the month of the Bitcoin halving, which is the biggest pump mental Bitcoin has in their code base, right? So that's going to be very huge. I also think that there's going to be a big Bitcoin L2 meta this year. It's going to be a huge, huge narrative. I also talked yesterday with Mikhil from Persistence. Um, and yeah, he just came back from the London conference by Blockworks. Um, and he said there's just this huge revived hype and excitement around Bitcoin L2s and also BRCs and just the Bitcoin ecosystem, right? So stay around for the end of the video because we have a huge, huge announcement for the Cosmos Hub that is also now entering the Bitcoin L2 meta. And this is really, really huge, which honestly caught, caught, caught me also a bit off guard. Anyways, um, Ethereum 3572. Nothing much happening to be, today, to be honest. Dogecoin up 10%, 11%. Um, yeah, meme coins are still doing well. Bitcoin Cash, um, I don't know, front running the, the Bitcoin halving. I think usually, historically, we see Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin always um, front running a little bit, um, the, the halving and kind of also the, the Bitcoin pump itself. This time, they're lagging a bit behind because Bitcoin is already at, at all-time highs in price discovery, basically, whereas those are still lagging behind. Um, other than that, we saw a bit of a pump yesterday for Atom. So out of absolutely nowhere, we saw this uh, pump here, right? From $12.10 to $13 within literally like a couple minutes. So might be some whale who, who bought, might be Grayscale for their um, DGIF, for the new Dynamic Income Fund, which we talked about in a recent video. Grayscale basically building a portfolio with cash flow generating tokens, right? Through staking. So basically, they're betting big on staking and Cosmos Hub still has very uh, decent, I think 15% staking APR plus airdrops, which is huge, right? If you look at the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem, we see um, IXO, 636%. I don't actually know if that is true. We have to look here also. This is just something that I just saw right now as I'm recording this video. But if we look into it, IXO has a trading volume of $40,000. That's not a lot. Um, also, I think liquidity is still relatively thin. Um, yeah, only $6,000 volume here. And then in this Atom Exo pool, um, yeah, I don't know. There's some anomaly going on here. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not too updated about Exo these days, to be quite honest. So yeah, when you see those things, treat that with caution, especially, you know, look at the trading volumes and 40,000 is not a lot, right? Liquidity is relatively thin. So be cautious with, with those pumps. Um, even if you see it on CoinGecko like this, right? This doesn't mean that this is now a 7X that's fully liquid and like, you know, with volume, right? Which we can see it's actually not. Anyways, Asset Mantle up 30%. Um, Asset Mantle seems to be kind of pumping a lot in the recent uh, days and weeks. Um, I thought they were kind of dead, um, but it looks like that they're, that they're pumping here. So I don't know if you know anything about Asset Mantle over the recent weeks and months. Um, but maybe also here we can look into volume slightly better, almost 100k, which is not that bad actually. Um, and yeah, 7.2 million dollar uh, market cap. But yeah, I mean the chart is still pretty dead if you ask me, right? 83 cents was the all-time high, um, but yeah, now it it bounced 350% from the lows. Uh, still a tiny micro cap. They um, yeah basically started off as a NFT marketplace. I don't know if that's still the narrative they're going with, but um, yeah. Um, Maybe they're like pivoting more. Yeah, tokenization, RWA. So maybe that's that's why they're they're reviving now. But uh, I don't know anything about asset mental these days, to be quite honest. Same for EXO. I'm not actively following that. There's also just way too much going on. But we're seeing the pumps. We're seeing that there's life there. there there's something going on there. Um, so yeah, that's that. Region also up 21%. Onomi, 17%. Onomi has had a great run. Um, we also just dropped a... Proposal, by the way, a governance proposal to join the set on the forum at least. Um, and yeah, either we'll will ask for a funding grant because you need um, X amount of NOM tokens for your self-bond in the validator to bootstrap the node. And previously validators have received grants for that. Um, we might either do a grant application or a loan application. Um, I think the difference is also just between incentives in the end of the day, right? Long-term incentive alignment. So if we would receive a grant, obviously it would be different than receiving a, um, a loan. But uh, either way, I think, you know, we're very excited about Enomi. I'm very excited about Enomi. I think it's um, a new generation Cosmos chain. Um, I talked to the team. They seem to be super legit and exciting. Um, 
and passionate about what they're doing, right? And this is, I think, first and foremost, the most important thing that you want to look in um, in a founder or in a project, right? Other than that, yeah, some green here, um, especially like the, the OG coins, right? Like even the uh, the bit songs, the secret networks, Juno up three percent today. Um, some sign of life there as well. Even Loom, Comdex. So yeah, Crescent. By the way, this chain is shutting down, so please do not ape into that. Um, they basically, yeah, they're also like a hundred thousand dollar market cap. So the, you know, just exit your funds from the Crescent network, from the Crescent chain. If you still have LP positions there, you have to withdraw them ASAP. Just a friendly reminder here. Anyways, that's all about that. Um, now I want to talk about a brand new project that is actually going on mainnet very, very soon. I talked about it in the past couple of months. They just had a presentation at Biddle Asia in South Korea and Seoul. And Yair Klepper, the founder and CEO of Lava Network, just dropped a big alpha at this conference about the next steps and about tokenomics. Mainnet is coming and today we're sharing our tokenomics. And there are three different things in the tokenomics. Lava has a fix and deflationary supply. That's one. Second, stakers from Lava can earn tokens from other chains. The third one is Lava champions. As I mentioned before, every ecosystem that join Lava and define a spec, the, the, there also could be a community member defined as champion to do that. So watch out for Lava Network. Stay tuned for more updates and information. Also, they have this Magma program going on right now where you can basically collect points. Potentially, you know, this is going to be an airdrop. So yeah, check out Lava Network. I think this is a very interesting project. We've been covering here for three years now, two and a half years or something like that. Long, 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 long time ago. Um, we also have invested into Lava with uh, Stixito. So we're one of the early backers there. We're also running a node there. Um, and once you receive your Lava tokens, if you participated in the Magma program, or if you buy them on the open market or an investor, you'll be able to get delegate to our node. And yeah, Lava is very crucial infrastructure that um, is basically the gateway to crypto, the door into blockchain, right? And by the way, this talk, um, I only listened to half of it, but uh, the first half is already fire. Yeah, he's a great, great speaker. So listen to his talk. I think it's very interesting. He's really talking about, in a very simple way, breaking down something that's actually very complex on a technical level, right? So that's Lava Network. Definitely watch out for that. And then as promised, breaking Atom News, Cosmos Hub is entering the Bitcoin L2 arena. What do I mean that by that? Well, we already know that Bitcoin staking is coming to the Cosmos Hub through Babylon chain. They made a huge announcement a couple of weeks ago about Babylon basically integrating with the Cosmos Hub and basically launching there first, launching there for their Bitcoin staking protocol, right? And Babylon itself evolved from a timestamping protocol into Bitcoin staking, which basically allows BTC holders to stake their BTC and actually earn yield, right? And when I first heard of it, it was like, okay, what, what you know, what are the Bitcoin people saying about this, right? What's their, how is this received and perceived from the Bitcoin community? And they said, actually, quite positive, right? Very, very positive, surprisingly positive. And all the events they're just talking at and, you know, networking they're doing, people are very excited about this, right? Because it unlocks the value of Bitcoin and BTC, puts it in, turns it into a productive asset and secures the proof of stake economy at the same time, right? And one clear thing that I think is a, is a directly crystal clear addressable market is wrapped Bitcoin, right? The wrapped Bitcoin market, because those are Bitcoin people that are already willing to basically take additional risk because obviously this is all risky, right? Restaking, I said multiple times, is a brand new innovation or Bitcoin staking, a brand new innovation and while fully audited, while undergoing stress tests and you know multiple testnet phases and all these kind of things, it is a brand new thing. So by default, it is... Um, more risky than just not doing anything with it. But um, it has a huge addressable market. And red Bitcoin people are already willing to take risks um, to earn extra yield, right? So I think targeting that market makes a lot of sense. And um, yeah, from there on, I think if proven secure and resilient and sustainable, I think 
that's something solid to build on, right? So very, very excited for Babylon. I've also been an early investor there myself, an angel investor into Babylon um, since almost two years now. I'm closely in touch with the team. They're also always coming to Cosmoverse. Um, they actually had their basically coming out um, out of stealth at Cosmoverse in 2022 in Medellin. But what's new now is that there's a new team called Lorenzo Protocol, which is building an Atom secured app chain that in my understanding is also EVM compatible that offers Bitcoin L2s as a service, leveraging Bit Babylon technology. So they're actually using Babylon, but they're fully Atom secured. And they will be the one of the first ones to actually use partial set security on the Cosmos Hub. So this announcement has um, released yesterday, and this is happening very, very fast. Mainnet is planned to go live as soon as late April, right? And we are in late March right now. So a month, more or less, until uh, Mainnet. Here's a full announcement. Lorenzo Protocol. Onboarded by Informal Systems, the team led by Ethan Buckman, co-founder of Cosmos. And um, yeah, they have, they're also the ones that are building and maintaining and refining shared security on the Cosmos Hub and basically the core contributors on the technical side of things. Um, and yeah, they have landed this integration. Very, very exciting. I actually have a call scheduled with the Lorenzo team. I don't know too much about them, but I will talk about them and share updates as I get to know more. And they'll also be in Dubai, I guess, for the Cosmos Dubai event. But yeah, you can learn all here about yeah how that works, how that looks like, um, their incentive alignment, STBTC, which is very, very exciting, Lorenzo liquid restaking. This is all coming to the Cosmos app. This is really big, in my view, really, really big and unexpected at the same time. Atom itself, um, yeah, also has other stuff going on. There's this permission cosmosm proposal, which also kind of came out of nowhere. Um, it's a signaling proposal. So even if that proposal goes through, it will not add permission cosmosm onto the Cosmos Hub. Just for context, cosmosm is the smart contract framework on in Cosmos, native to the Cosmos ecosystem. And permissioned, basically there are two ways, right? Permissioned and permissionless. Permissioned means that for any application or any new code to basically be added, there still needs to be on a per case, on an individual basis, a governance vote on whether this code should be added, right? Um, it adds the functionality that the Cosmos Hub can actually execute contracts, but it's still gate kept by governance. Permissionless, which is something that Neutron deploys or Juno Network or some others, means that anybody can run and execute any type of contract on Cosmosm who wants, right? Which which would be a bit of a risk because I think that could also kind of change the pathway of the Cosmos Hub. But I think permission Cosmosm here is very important in the context of improving the tooling for the Cosmos Hub itself to be able to um, move faster, adapt faster, to also potentially be compatible with mesh security when it comes one day. Uh, mesh security is this, is this concept of shared security where chains can secure each other. Um, so, and that requires Cosmosm compatibilities. So that is all beneficial. Um, and I think, especially now that Atom 1 forked away with Jay's vision, Atone, a minimal IBC and ICS hub, this might actually go through, right? We're seeing right now it's super tight, you know, but we're only at 10% quorum right now. 40% uh, is needed for the proposal to actually be, you know, to actually go through if there's a majority for yes. But so far, so good relatively, right? I mean, 34% um, is, is not bad. Um, so yeah, we, we have to wait and see. But again, this is also just a signaling proposal. So even if it goes through, it would not be implemented into the code base yet. But still, that's very exciting. Then we have also interesting news from PSTAKE. They just added SDK Huawei to be able to basically liquid stake your Huawei using PStake. And there's also a huge incentivized PStake pool now on Dexter. I made a full video about Dexter yields the other day. Um, there are some great opportunities. Um, I aped into the SDK stars and stars pool still has, I think, around 90 or 100% um, APR. And now there is a huge um, SDK Huawei, Huawei pool, which um, also has, I think, two, 300% APR or something like that. Um, or at least 100%. But um, yeah, you can check that out here and check out PSTAKE and also Dexter. Then I also want to bring up a new chain to you where I just had a call with them. I um, also just met the co-founder here in Dubai. 
Um, they are very um, kind of new to the, to the Cosmos ecosystem, but they definitely want to connect more. But this is a Cosmos SDK built layer one blockchain. This is also EVM compatible, I guess, um, yeah, using Ethermint by Avmos. And um, yeah, they are basically very, very application oriented, which is something that you don't really see in Cosmos, right? Like most Cosmos chains are more infrastructure focused and like hardcore builders, but the match chain team seems to be much more focused on the application side of things, right? They already have existing use cases in Web2, and they basically want to bring that all onto their brand new Cosmos chain. They will also be in Dubai. So Patrick's um, will be the speaker at our Cosmos Dubai event. They're also uh, sponsors for, for Cosmos Dubai, and um, we'll actually release the full list of sponsors for Cosmos Dubai quite soon, but it's actually turning out to be a quite large event, like three to 400 people, I guess, um, full day events. So that's very exciting. And, you know, always good to see new builders. So Match Chain, if you know about them, then please let me know. What do you think about them? I haven't done a deep dive research yet, but definitely something I want to bring on your radar. Finally, quick uh, catch up on airdrops. So the Saga airdrop um, claim has ended for the for the Bad Kids drop and also for the Atom and Tia drop. Um, but there will be a new one for Saga stakers. So if you got the airdrop, then uh, when the when the Saga token drops, which is going to be in April, so in a couple of weeks, the Saga mainnet is going to launch. And when that happens, and if you stake your Saga tokens, then you will get another airdrop. So very exciting here. Um, I am most likely, depending on the price, obviously, maybe we can do a separate video on that, but I'm most likely going to stake all of my Saga airdrop tokens. Um, because I also want more of them, right? Um, so yeah, that's Saga. Then we have NIM. You still have a week to claim the NIM airdrop here. That's an AI gaming chain that is um, deployed on Dimension. So it's a roll app. And um, yeah, there's going to be an airdrop for that. So claim that right now. Hydro, I talked about it. Decent pump here ever since they launched. Um, I told you how, how to claim the airdrop in my previous video. Um, and um, there's going to be a season two for HDRO stakers. So similar to the Saga airdrop, if you stake your HDRO, which I will probably do right now uh, after doing after after recording this video, then you will probably get another airdrop. That said, two things I want to leave you with: how to find airdrops early. Right, Leap, Leap Wallet, um, one of the best wallets in Cosmos, um, has a huge dashboard, and they also just launched a mobile version where you can stay up to date and check eligibility for airdrops in Cosmos. And this is great because also this is vetted by the team from a technical point of view, right? So this is usually safe to claim. And um, yeah, that's how you're not missing out on anything. And another thing is, if you're stake C2 delegator, you will receive messages. We're sending out messages to our delegators. That's actually something that is a very cool feature from Kepler that validators can do that. and we gave airdrop reminders back in the day, five months ago, about Celestia, the tier airdrop, which turned out to be a decent, decent five-figure airdrop for most of you. So this is something where we're just sharing that, you know, uh, claim window expires. We share information about um, how much you, you know, should have staked. We make tutorials. So we even share you the links about those tutorials and also the claim site, right? Um, and you see, this gets huge engagement, right? 120 likes. Um, we, we did another reminder here. We did the Dimension Airdrop reminder. We're sending these out left and right to inform you about all of these airdrops that are happening, right? And that's why I think you should always delegate with Stakesito to be notified for those messages, right? And the way where you find this is if you go on your dashboard and you click here on Inbox on the Kepler um, wallet um, webpage, and that's where you find it, right? That's all for today. I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching, for subscribing. Please watch my video from two days ago about ZK projects, privacy. Privacy is one of the most important pillars of crypto, right? And I think we will have a privacy season and a ZK season at some point in this cycle. Obviously, we'll have a continuous AI cycle going on, right? I think this whole cycle will be dominated by AI and also potentially by um, modularity and, and restaking. I think those are like guaranteed narratives. I think we're also going to see a big revival of NFTs and metaverse. So I have my place, uh, my bets placed there as well. And with that, I'll leave you. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe until then and be good.